We recently did a video on what focus mode is and various ideas of how you can use it to keep you more productive. For today, I thought it would be helpful to do a deeper dive into the ways I use my phone to keep me on track. There are so many things to talk about today about how your phone can either be your biggest distraction or your most helpful tool. But for now, like always, let's talk tech. I'm Arnell with Ardently Tech. On this channel, we talk all things tech, with videos of product reviews, tech hacks, tutorials, and more. Tech was made to make our lives easier, and we're here to help you understand it all. Make sure to subscribe if you're a tech lover or if you want to learn more about it. So, after watching a few of our other videos about incredible MagSafe accessories that have changed the game, or our video on focus mode and creative uses to make even a trip to the grocery store more productive, you get by now that all of us here at Ardently Tech love tech that make our lives easier. Personally, if I just lost my phone and couldn't recover any information from the cloud, I'd be completely lost. I wouldn't remember anyone's birthdays, the address or directions to my afternoon meeting next Thursday, the name of that song that I don't know the words but I can only hum, the list just goes on and on. Since we just did an in-depth video on focus mode specifically, I won't talk too long about it today, but in short, it's been a real big help to customize my phone experience and show me the apps I need to get through what I'm doing. It's limited my screen time at work, at home, around bedtime, and it's hid most of my notifications while I'm driving. I mentioned in that video that I use a focus mode for when I'm shopping at the grocery store. One thing that keeps me on track of what I need at the store is a shopping list. Now, many of us could use our reminders grocery list, but there are a few different things that I do to help keep me focused and getting the right things at the store. On my grocery list, I have it shared with my wife so that at any time, either one of us can add what we need at the store on the fly. If I need to go to multiple stores like Publix, Best Buy, and Walmart, to name a few, I can have each specific thing remind me when I get to the store, so that way I know exactly what I need to get at each store. For example, if I need to go to these stores to get different things like lemonade, a new vacuum, and paper towels, for example, I can set a location reminder to just get the lemonade at my local Publix because it's BOGO this week, go get the vacuum at Best Buy because that model is on clearance, and get the paper towels at Walmart because they're the cheapest place near me for bounty, for example. That way, when I walk into the store, my reminder notification will go off right away so I know exactly what I'm getting at that store. I can set it so that I get more location reminders for as many things that I need to get to different stores. This makes those days of bargain hunting across town much easier. Speaking more generally about the Reminders app, pro tip if you didn't know, you can pretty fluidly ask Siri to remind you to do pretty much anything at a certain time or when you're arriving or leaving a certain location. You can also ask Siri to remind you about something you're reading right now, but you want to look at it later. Like right now, here's a shot of me starting to read a recipe for dinner, but it's the morning. I want to remember this exact recipe so when I start cooking dinner at 5, I can find this later on. Yes, I can just click the buttons to bookmark the page, or I can go the easy route and just say, hey Siri, remind me about this later. Anyways, that's just a quick tip about reminders that I use just about every day and it's incredibly helpful. Another useful app I use every day is my calendar. We all have our favorites, whether it's the built-in Apple calendar, the Google calendar. I mean, there's even a calendar through Alexa, but I don't even know why you would use that. Now you can check out our video on how to link all of your Google calendars to your Apple calendar, so that way it's all in one spot by just clicking the add card right up here. I like to use the built-in calendar with Apple. I like the aesthetic and the ability to access it on my phone, on my Mac, Apple Watch, or iPad pretty fluidly. The obvious best tip I can give you for the calendar is to actually use it. Appointments or birthdays are probably the biggest things that go into any calendar. For me, any appointments that I set are immediately put in with alerts to remind me when I need to leave, and I like to put in a second alert about an hour or two beforehand just as an extra reminder. Birthdays are a lifesaver since I'm notorious for forgetting important dates like that. So whenever I'm putting in a new contact in my phone, I try to immediately put in that birthday at the same time so I remember for the future. 
One feature that might not be as popular that people might not know about is actually sharing your calendars with other people. My wife and I share lots of events, so we're aware of doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, planned date nights, kids' birthday parties, and so on. I just share a calendar appointment with her when it's something we're both attending or for something that's relevant to her. And for things that don't affect her, I just leave them on my calendar unshared. It's really helpful knowing what we have going on and to have reminders of when to leave based on wherever we're at from distance to that appointment. The next tip is kind of a quick pro tip for something I've done recently that I've found incredibly useful. So you know when you found an important file on your computer, for example, and you forward that attachment to yourself in an email so you can reference it later or forward it to somebody else that needs it? The problem that can happen is actually having trouble finding it later on when you need it. You thought you put something relevant in the subject line or labeled the document something you can search for later, but you just can't find it when you do a search later on. You might not even remember what it was about, which makes it even harder to find. What I've recently started doing is just tagging relevant stuff in the body of the email. I'll use another recipe for example. Here I'm saving this important recipe to send to myself so I can print it out later when I'm by my printer. So I'm going to copy the link and send an email to myself and label the subject line, awesome dinner idea, thinking that's relevant enough. But when I go to my computer later and search for steak recipe, for example, since that's what it is, I can't find it. So to help with that, I've started just adding in tags to my email, listing off what's in the actual recipe. Steak, cast iron, thyme, butter, Montreal seasoning, garlic. I'll be right back. Anyways, you get the point. So when I search for a steak recipe later on, regardless of what I have in the subject line or what's in the link or how I have a particular document labeled, I'll be able to find it just by searching for the tags. If you found this list valuable, consider dropping a like and subscribing to our channel for more content like this. Our whole team here at Ardently Tech believes that tech was fundamentally made to make our lives easier and keep us more productive. We have a passion for all kinds of tech, from everyday stuff like phones and computers to stuff we're just personally passionate about, like gaming and podcasting. As always, we appreciate you being here and being a part of this growing channel. Till next time. Peace.